a rien de plus détesté que la musique sans signification cachée. Si j'étais plus stupide que moi, je pense que j'atteindrais le sommet de ma carrière. Have you ever caught yourself hearing, for example, a monstrously false performance of a song or a person talking utter nonsense and blood seemed to gush out of your ears, but you just couldn't tear yourself away from that? Perhaps people are so spoiled and perverted that they endlessly watch and listen to shit after bathing in which they want, if not to take a communion, then at least to take a shower. Or you see one's pretty girl with a severe makeup or even worse plastic surgery. I remember one young woman who wanted to learn English turning up for an interview, but her lips were of such a size that I had to reject her, referring to my busy schedule. In fact, I just realized that I couldn't teach her to communicate. It was impossible to get used to the sight of such lips. When we see a cripple, we seek to avert our eyes. And the children stare at them without a twinge of concerns. They may not have been taught how to behave, but they're not corrupted, are they? The matter is uh, that there is simply no harmony without disharmony. The beauty of music is nothing without dissonance. The aesthetic doesn't necessarily mean beautiful. Why are we not only attracted to the beautiful and harmonious, but also to the ugly, amorphous and wrong? It might be explained quite simply. Everything vile and ugly causes negative emotions in us and we strive to get rid of that and calm down. We protest and want to return to the usual category of pleasant, harmonious, beautiful, which doesn't break out of the norms established in society and culture. This was already mentioned by Aristotle in his Poetics. The ugly, as a part of aesthetics, has several categories, which were specified in 1853 by Johann Karl Friedrich Rosenkranz. He compiled an entire inventory, in which he included amorphousness, asymmetry, disharmony, caricature, inaccuracy, deformation or disintegration of the form. He pays special attention to mediocrity, meanness, insignificance, gusty emptiness. The entire progress of mankind has been undergoing phases of transition, from the beautiful to the ugly and vice versa. What was first considered the apogee of aestheticism then became terrible, human sacrifices, cults, everything new was perceived as disgusting and wrong and then became a symbol of the era, Baroque, avant-garde, and even mythical creatures, uh, centaurs, mermaids, unicorns, uh, which in modern culture and art are taken habitually and even positively, actually had a lot to do with the category of ugly because they were the complete opposite of the ancient gods. During the war and the post-war period, uh, when all human resources were exhausted and the aesthetic attitudes of the past didn't coincide with the actual reality and the horrors of the surrounding world, the foggy future and the fragile present, various manifestations of the ugly, disgusting and vile in art uh, served as evidence of people's inner struggle with this reality. Uh, there was a change in our psychic mood due to the absence of evolution, a crisis of thinking and uh, a powerful technical development. The classic opposition, beautiful, terrible, disappeared and there was a mix. This is how, for example, jazz or punk emerged. 
The ugly included the ideas of Nietzsche, Freud, Bergson, and became a genuine cultural phenomenon of the 20th century and manifested itself in a soft version, expressionism, surrealism, absurdity, causing pleasure and delight, and uh, in all this cruelty and unsightliness, um, existentialism, especially Sartre, and uh, a citizenization of death, drug delirium and uh, pornography, as well as various modern art performances sometimes extended to causing physical harm or even death. As for the aestheticization of death, uh, the search of beauty here is inherent in many people's philosophies and beliefs. This is a part of the life circle, and if life is beautiful, then death can be beautiful as well. What's so good about that? Reincarnation, finding harmony, uh, transition to a better world, incredible Gothic sculptures and temples, fascinating rituals. Uh, the simplest example is to remember flowers. They wither and dry out, but even so we consider them beautiful. For me, uh, the sincerity of any psychological phenomenon and the value of any artistic text is determined primarily by the presence of two components, ambiguity and ambivalence. If you say that there is ambiguity in something, you mean that it is unclear or confusing, or it, it, it can be understood in more than one way. Uh, often this ambiguity is generated by polysemy of words and grammar structures. This is the great complexity of the translation craft and the real thrill for the interpreter. If you say that there is uh, an ambiguity in a situation or in someone's character, you mean that it contains several different qualities or attitudes which do not fit well together. Use such examples. This ambiguity of character was further exacerbated by his remoteness, and as he grew older, he increasingly displayed a preference for solitude, which may have stemmed from his isolated upbringing. At the same time, for old times' sake, people still saw him as a charismatic person. From all his occupations he had gathered amusing anecdotes, which he told with a keen pleasure in his own powers of entertainment. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then, her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I've seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know, music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, my mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she, belied with false compare. Of course, politicians and lawyers should avoid any such ambiguity. The utterance and actions for them are in fact identical and do not allow even a shadow of ambiguity. Scientists, in order to avoid ambiguity, operate with terms that are ideally unambiguous. But even here is, uh, everything is not so simple. The terms are usually adopted from Latin or Greek, that is, unlike uh, the original non-borrowed words, they are not overgrown with polysemanticism. However, we remain convinced that international certification for the vaccine would have the advantage of avoiding confusion and ambiguity. For its part, the Middle East region could afford any ambiguity with regard to nuclear weapons proliferation. 
Ambivalence is the simultaneous existence of two opposed and conflicting attitudes, emotions, as love and hate. It is coexistence within an individual of positive and negative feelings toward the same person, object or action, drawing them in opposite directions. Среди миров в мерцании светил одной звезды я повторял. Не потому, чтоб я ее любил, а потому, что мне темно с другими. И если мне на сердце тяжело, Одной ищу ответа Не потому, что от нее светло А потому, что с ней не надо свет О, нет, не стал, хоть он так нежно зыбок, Я из твоих соблазнов затвою. Не влажный блеск малиновых улыбок, Страдания холодную змею. Так иногда в банально пестрой зале, Где вальс звенит волной моля, Ловлю мечтой я в звуке парсифаля. И тени смерти под маской короля. Оставь меня, мне ложа стелет скука. Зачем мне рай, которым гретят все? А если грязь и низость, только мука, По где-то там сияющая красивая. Sigmund Freud viewed ambivalence as the coexistence of two initially inherent and man opposite deep motives, the most fundamental of which are the desire for life and the desire for death. I share the point of view that uh, the instincts of self-preservation and self-destruction are equally strong in the person. His construction of narrative, drama, emotion and moral ambivalence through language define our understanding of who we are and what we do. Such discomfort is further increased by the ambivalence with which global governance institutions are viewed by national political leaders. The Oedipus complex denotes the imminent, corresponding to the bipolar location, universal unconscious attraction of the child to the parent. Any parent who's honest will tell you that you live with that ambivalence. Concern about ambivalence towards domestic violence has led to awareness programs to ensure women know their rights. I must say, many of those about you are most unpleasant. Your ambivalence about having a child, for instance, you can't blame second-wave feminism for ambivalence about having a kid. In my opinion, uh, the belonging of the words ambiguity and ambivalence to the same semantic field causes some confusion of subject-object relations. I have noticed uh, this many times in a variety of English language scientific literature. Since the object is inherently am ambiguous, my attitude towards it can be ambivalent. I propose to leave the question, are all people, objects and phenomena ambiguous open? Artificially forced mystique is pretentious, miserable and pathetic.
Только не надо играть в загадочность И делать из жизни le vin triste. Разве можно от женщины требовать многого? Там, где глупость божественна и ничто. I should also note that the Swiss psychiatrist Eugen Bleuter, best known for the term uh, schizophrenia, considers ambivalence uh, to the main sign of schizophrenia, or more broadly, schizoidness in general. Uh, but this probably happens just in those cases when the patient sees ambiguity where there is no ambiguity at all. Я могу и падали создавать поэмы. Я люблю из горничных делать королев. Going back to the examples I started with. In their own way, uh, these are happy people. They do not see or hear themselves from the outside. They are completely unable to reflect in doubt, and they do not suffer from ambivalence. Ambivalence is a very uncomfortable breadth of use, from which all the foundation stones crack. And it is a painful duty to weigh all pros and cons. As a homework assignment, we often ask our students to record themselves. To make an audio or video recording of a monologue or even a dialogue with a stereo effects and different voices. Someone gets it from the second take, someone succeeds from the twelfth, so sometimes you don't have to learn anything by heart. And importantly, the classmates will also see it and who wants to embarrass themselves? And we never make these records publicly available, but sometimes we send them to the students' parents as an illustration for the great in the diary. Uh, many people are unpleasantly surprised by the sound of their voice or the inability to ignore the camera. Uh, this is how people see and hear you. Do not be deceived, but do not get inferiority complex. It will be better next time. Gonna keep on walking for